Hello and welcome back to the Interpac Academy. I'm Dave Praber, Director of the Interpac Design and Innovation Group. Today, in our latest video series, we will discuss selecting an industrial valve. Interpac offers a line of industrial directional control valves. These valves provide control to many industrial hydraulic systems. Determining the best valve or valves for your application can be a daunting task if you do not understand how the specific valves function. In this video series, we will provide some basic principles to aid in your valve selection process. Let's discuss which directional control valve may be best suited for a few different applications. While we will not get into complex or unique requirements, we will cover some basic valve applications that will give you a better understanding of valve circuits and help determine what may work best for you. For this discussion, we will assume the valve will be pump mounted. The same selection criteria will typically work for a remote mounted valve as well. To select the best valve for your needs, you will need to know about three basic criteria about your application. The first thing to consider is what your cylinder or tool needs to do, or how it needs to operate. Does it need to extend and then retract, or does it need to extend, stop, and extend again before retracting? If it only needs to extend and then retract, then a two-position valve would be a good choice. This is typical operation for a punch or a crimper or a cutter or a torque wrench. If your application requires the ability to advance, hold in either direction and then retract, then a three position valve will be the proper choice. This third position, the center position, gives you a hold capability in addition to the advance and retract operations. This is the typical operation for a cylinder in an industrial press or a bender, which usually needs the cylinder to be started and then stopped mid-stroke. The next thing to consider is if your cylinder or tool is a single acting or double acting. From our first video, we know a single acting cylinder or tool typically requires a three-way valve. For double acting cylinders or tools, your focus should be on the four-way valve models. So looking at a few actual examples, most hydraulic torque wrenches are double acting tools. They typically extend full stroke, then retract multiple times. Based on this, most hydraulic torque wrenches are operated with a four-way, two-position valve. Third on the list, if your operation requires a three-position valve, what type of center configuration is needed? Most industrial valve circuits use the tandem center configuration. Applications like industrial hydraulic presses using single acting cylinders require the ability to start and stop the cylinder as it approaches the load. Also, when the cylinder is in the stop mode, it needs to hold the position. A typical valve choice for this application would be a three-way, three-position valve with a tandem center configuration. The tandem center will close the A-port keeping the cylinder from moving, while also allowing free flow from the P to the T ports, unloading the pump while in the center position. Closed center valves are typically used in remote mounted multi-valve applications. When used in these applications, an additional valve or pressure switch is required to unload the pump. For a manual valve model, the operator needs to be near the valve to operate it by hand. For a remote valve model, the operator can control the valve via a corded or cordless pendant. Remote valves are typically a more expensive solution as they require solenoids, power, and pendants to provide a remote feature. Lastly, certain three-way and four-way tandem center valves are available with a locking feature in the center position. This option prevents cylinder movement while the valve shifts between positions. This capability is accomplished by integral check valves in the valve manifold and is completely automatic or autonomous with no intervention required by the operator. I hope you found this review of valve applications useful. If you're looking to specify an industrial valve into your application, these examples should help get you started. 
For more information, you can visit us at enterpac.com or reach out to your nearest Enterpac contact for further assistance. In the final course of this series, we will discuss how to apply flow and pressure control valves in your applications. I'm Dave Praber for the Enterpac Academy, and thanks for watching.